All right, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, we appreciate you guys for having us again. We presented to you all uh, a few months ago about the conductor and, and the work that we do. Um, and, and we're coming to you tonight with a very specific request uh, because of a uh, federal opportunity that has come across our desk here just in the last couple of weeks. Quick reminder, you know the mission of the conductor is to empower entrepreneurs and innovators. We get up every day and we think about how to help uh, uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners in our, in our community uh, be successful. We've seen over 35,000 uh, participants uh, in all of our programming since 2016. We've had about a 74.5% increase, almost 75% increase uh, over 2021. Uh, largely responsible for that is the opening of the Arnold Innovation Center. Uh, about 35% are racial minorities and about uh, 59, almost 60% are, are women-owned businesses. Uh, more than 30.5%, 30.5% of clients reported adding new positions to their business after coming into contact with the conductor. 32.6% uh, uh, of clients reported adding new products or services. Many times that we've helped them kind of concept and, and help them think through how to build out and take to market. Uh, clients reported an average of 22.6% increases in revenue and about 72% of all of the one-on-one -on -one consults that we conduct, uh, uh, conducted in 2022, which are a lot of them, uh, were actually from Conway-specific businesses. So a lot of work going on here in Conway. We now have 71 members in the Arnold Innovation Center. 66% uh, of those, I'm sorry, 66 of those are co-working members, which means they pay, pay a small uh, amenities charge, $25 a month, and they're able to come in and co-work, uh, work on a space available basis. They get five hours a month of, of conference room space with that. Uh, we've got four meeting space uh, partners, small businesses that, that come in and use our meeting uh, uh, spaces for a specific uh, amount per month. And then uh, we're, we're be beginning to build out some lease space up upstairs with glass offices. And we've got one of those spoken for currently. As soon as that's built out, we'll have about seven offices available upstairs. There's kind of a, 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 an example of some of our Conway-based businesses that are basing their companies out of the Arnold Innovation Center, a technology-enabled delivery service, a Black Belt Media, uh, Inspire International, which is a, a, a company that does work around the world with uh, health and health supplements. Uh, strategic tax, and then uh, new house marketing. We have a number of financial partners in our community uh, and in our state that partner with the conductor. Uh, the University of Central Arkansas is going on our seventh year in a financial partnership with them. The U.S. Small Business Administration, we were one of seven competitive awards around the country uh, to be able to, uh, 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 to, to provide what we call the, the regional innovation cluster that came from the Small Business Administration. We're on our seventh cohort, getting ready to recruit our seventh cohort for the 10X Growth Accelerator, funded by the Arkansas Economic Development Commission. Of course, Conway Corp, Adafio, Conway Regional Health System, Axiom, uh, Conway Chamber, and CDC, they all contribute funds every year to enable the uh, conductor to do the work that we do for entrepreneurs at no cost to those entrepreneurs. There's only one, uh, uh, well, there, there are several logos that are missing, but there's one logo that's conspicuously missing, uh, from, the, uh, from the Arnold Innovation Center that we'd love to see, and that's the City of Conway logo. And I'd like to talk about a particular opportunity uh, then have Grace actually share that now uh, in terms of why we're coming to you guys today. And it's a time-sensitive request. It came across our desk about two weeks ago, actually a little less than two weeks ago, uh, and it's an end-of-the-month application for that. So Yeah. So what we're here to talk about today is the Minority Business Development Agency's Capital Readiness Program. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program. I'm going to tell you a little about what we're proposing to do with this funding and with the program. Um, and then we do have an ask for you guys. Um, so the program is a four-year program. Um, it contributes between $575,000 per year through the grant funds, um, depending on the match requirement but that we're able to achieve. Um, it, you know, the 10 to 25% match is dependent on the 500 to 75,000 per year. Um, this grant poke this grant program focuses on what they're calling SETI entrepreneurs, which is socially or economically disadvantaged individuals. Um, the, there's a big long list of what qualifies you to be a SETI entrepreneur according to the MBDA. Um, the entrepreneurs that we're gonna focus on in our program are women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, BIPOC businesses, and rural businesses. Um, those are our areas that we're already serving entrepreneurs that we just wanna build upon. Um, the, the premise of the program is building um, on an incubator or accelerator model or both. And so um, incubators are, you know, really normally um, spaces like the Arnold Innovation Center where you can come in, you know, receive mentorship, receive um, 
business support, access to capital networks. Um, you know, businesses can operate out of those spaces or they can just receive the services. Um, but that's really what an incubator is in serving entrepreneurs. Accelerator models um, are more um, a time-bound program um, that entrepreneurs go through that are um, receiving specific programming. Uh, we mentioned we have a 10x growth accelerator program uh, that has already been really successful. And so our thought process is we would like to have an incubator and accelerator model. And I'm going to talk through kind of what we're thinking with the incubator and accelerator model that we're proposing today. Um, so starting with the incubator program, we would like to really create the Arnold Innovation Center as a resource center for entrepreneurs. We've already got a lot of resources happening there, but how do we up the ante and create um, a true resource incubator model out of the AIC? Um, so we'd like to start what we're calling Conductor Connect, which is a subject matter expert network. Um, Conductor Connect will be um, a program where we bring in subject matter experts for office hours in the Arnold Innovation Center. We'll bring in CPAs, lawyers, marketing experts, government procurement experts, um, a variety of different um, expertise areas in order for entrepreneurs to come in, be able to access those resources at no cost, and we'll be able to provide funding to bring those um, subject matter experts in uh, to provide those resources. Um, another program that we'd like to propose through this is what we're calling the Roundtable, which is a peer-to-peer -peer network um, opportunity. So a lot of times what we hear from entrepreneurs is it's lonely at the top, and so they, you know, they don't have a lot of peers to talk through. You know, they have um, employees, but they don't have colleagues that they can run things by. And so they, as they hit barriers, as they have issues, um, they need to have that peer-to-peer -peer networking. Um, and it's also proven that entrepreneurs that have that peer-to-peer -peer cohort mentality um, tend to see better results in their businesses, grow faster, things like that. And so um, that's an access to network um, piece that we want to bring in. So um, that we're calling that the round table. We're also going to put together what we're calling the Think Tank, which is a lending library for um, business resources and business books, lowering barriers um, to additional resources for entrepreneurs, um, and then increase our cadence of workshops, increase our cadence of pitch nights that we're doing, increasing our networking events, really creating a hub of resources for small business owners. How do we get cash into the hands of small business owners through pitch nights, through our Kiva Loan program, um, and really upping the ante on those programs that we're already doing um, but we want to be able to do do more of and provide more resources to Conway area businesses. And so this is the incubator model that that we're proposing is really upping the, the services that we're providing, adding new services, and doing that all out of the Arnold Innovation Center. Um, you will not have to be a member in order to access all of these things through the program. Um, you can be a member, um, but it'll be open to the public as well. All you have to do is be a small business owner or entrepreneur to qualify for these. So in addition to that incubator program, we're also pitching an accelerator. So um, as Jeff mentioned, we run the 10X Growth Accelerator. Um, we run that with funding from the AEDC. Um, the cohort members of that program have seen a 12X growth return um, on average. Um, and we have about a not over 90 um, plus NPS score, which is world class um, when it comes to um, net promoter scores, essentially saying that the participants in our program would refer our program to others after going through it. Um, so we want to build on that success. Um, that program is positioned for companies between 100,000 and 10 million in revenue. Um, we see a gap in early stage companies that may not be tech enabled, may not be scalable, but are a little bit smaller and just need a leg up to grow. They need to know about process improvement. They need to know about you know how to how to grow their business functionally from one employee to two employees or from you know three employees to 10 employees. Um, and so that's where the Catalyst Accelerator comes in. We're pitching an accelerator from. 10,000 to 500,000 in revenue for Arkansas-based companies over 14 weeks. Um, it'll be based here out of Conway, and so it'll be available for Conway businesses, but it'll also be available for businesses outside of the outside of Conway. Our thought process there is we have we're going to have this robust incubator that we're building in Conway that's a resource center, and we're going to recruit companies from from other places and from Conway to come in and see what Conway is building here and realize that Conway is the place to grow a business. You have all the resources you need. You have a place that has low cost for you to build your team. Um, relocate here, start your business here. Um, or if you're going to start a business, Conway is the place to do it. Um, and so through these two programs, we feel like we're able to really serve the, the Conway area businesses very, very well, um, as well as you know bring in additional businesses and make Conway the place to, to grow. So with this program that we're currently um, pitching to you, 
Uh, we have funding partners and support partners that have already signed on. So um, the Arkansas Department of Commerce and the AEDC have already agreed and provided us a letter of support for this program. Um, they've seen the track record that we have with 10X. They've seen the gap for the type of accelerator that we're pitching. Um, and so they've agreed to support us in this. Um, our four congressional delegations are also signing a letter of support to support us in this. Um, and then the governor is also, the, her office is working on a letter of support as well for this program. Um, so we're working at you know a statewide level um, to bring in some, some letters of support. So our commitment to you guys with this program is that we want to provide robust programming within the Arnold Innovation Center. And like I said, make Conway a hub for area business. Um, we want to conduct a yearly needs assessment. So we're understanding the gaps for Conway businesses um, and meeting those gaps with the programming that we're providing um, and pivoting as we need to to provide the resources that they need to grow. Um, and then in addition to creating all those resources and providing all those resources, we also want to make sure that Conway is um, business friendly from a processes and procedures standpoint. So is the city of Conway, you know, the easiest place to grow a business? Um, and so with resources um, and with, you know, policies and procedures around, around growing business. So, um, and then finally, like Jeff mentioned, you know, we want to present the city of Conway as a conductor partner. Um, we have a lot of industry buy-in. Um, we have, you know, buy-in from the chamber and others. And, and we really want to partner with the city as we continue to grow because we see a lot of growth potential here in Conway for entrepreneurship. We've seen a lot of traction already, um, and we feel like there's just a lot, of, a lot of opportunity to go from here. So our ask from you guys is a written commitment of $150,000 per year for four years in match funding for this MDBA program. Um, that would allow us to get the Tier 3 program funding. If you look in your packet, you can see the different tiers of funding um, and the match commitments that are required for us to access that funding. Um, we're going to go big or go home model. We want to, you know, access that, that top tier funding um, because that allows us to bring in $3 million um, in match funding or in funding from the grant um, in training, growth consulting, technical assistance, and access to capital to call my business owners. Um, so with that match funding that the city would provide, that's a 500% return on investment um, when we receive the $3 million grant. So like Jeff said, this is a dead, is a kind of a time sensitive um, Subject, we have a deadline of February 4th in order to get the match funding for us to be able to apply. Um, so uh, the only th other thing that I'll mention is we know that this is a big ask from you guys. Um, there are other cities that are investing similarly in entrepreneur support organizations. So the city of Fayetteville contributes around $150,000 a year to their ESO. Um, the North Little Rock, the city of North Little Rock also contributes um, $225,000 to the Innovation Hub in North Little Rock. Um, and that's without any matching commitment. So they're not receiving a 500% return on that investment. That's just dollars going to those organizations. So with that, I will open it up to any questions. We'll, we'll be happy to answer anything you have. How does it happen? So that's a great question. So the, the grant program itself is a four-year program. Um, they have a matching commitment that they ask from us in order to access that top tier. So essentially, they're providing us funding commensurate with the match funding that we provide. So if we're able to get that 150, um, then they'll provide the full 750 per year for those four years. If we provide less than that, then they provide less. So it doesn't have to be 150. That's our ask. If, if there's something less than that that the council is comfortable in providing, then obviously we're, we're, we're open to that. Not that we'd be open to any of that. We're trying to we're trying to get the maximum federal funding for the program. Right. Yeah, and as you increase, so as you decrease the amount of match, um, you also decrease the amount of funding they get. So you're required a ten percent match um, for um, the lower level, and it kind of goes up from there. So it, it the table is in your packet that kind of shows it's a little bit confusing, but it shows the tier one, tier two, and tier three. So with, with grant about who you're targeting those programs would only be open to that cohort of people no so the programs for more than just so the programs would be open to anybody we have to target those individuals um, but even in the grant application they recognize that we'll be serving more than steady entrepreneurs um, but they want us to target um, those entrepreneurs the, the required percent or no like no um, and they don't even really, they require us to track those numbers, but they don't require us to only, it, it wouldn't be only open. None of the, and that's why none of that is branded as a specific minority, you know, 
um, program or women-owned program or anything like that. It would be for anybody and everybody. And that's something we've really stood behind is our programs are open to anybody that wants to participate, but we are we try and make sure that, you know, we are accessible to anybody that feels like an underserved entrepreneur. And that's why I think our numbers show that we tend to serve more SETI entrepreneurs than we do non-SETI. I think that's another reason that we think we have a really good shot at this. Number one, we are a proven federal contractor through the U.S. Small Business Administration, also through the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We had a, a program from them, Hoffman Foundation and others. Number two, our numbers of the people that we are serving, the numbers of people and the breakdowns of those numbers uh, show uh, that we are well-equipped for this population as well as others. Now, our outreach with this program would be more specific right. to those individuals. Yes, so, you know, the outreach, but the communication would be anyone and everybody can participate in these programs. Um, and the great thing about, you know, kind of the breadth of people that we're trying to serve is that most people would qualify as, you know, in our area as either rural, a woman, BIPOC, or a veteran. You know, that, that hits a huge swath of people um, and the majority of the people that we're already serving. On that table, tier three, that second column, yearly budget amount, which is from 625 to 750, is that where our 150 fits in this picture? It's the tier three um, would be, let me, sorry, I don't have it. So the full match for the 150 is going to be the, for the 750. That would be the, that's the three million. Is, but this is the amount total you don't need to raise? And yeah. all 150 is part of that? No, the 150 no. Is, the, is the matching dollars. That's what the MBBA, MBBA. Okay, so where's the three million come from? Is that four years worth of four it? Four years of okay. seven fifty. Right, right. gotcha. mm -hmm. okay. Four years gotcha. of seven fifty. Okay. My math's good now. Thank you. Now that table's, you know, it, they could have made it a little easier to read. Al, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh well, that's okay. Um, I actually had an appointment with Jeff the other day, and I had to, I had to reschedule. And I apologize, no but worries. um, I'm feeling better. Thank you. Thank you. I am, and um. I bet I'm, I have a feeling there are a lot of people in Conway that don't know what con the conductor does. And is there any way you can just give us a brief synopsis so that? Absolutely. Great, you know, great question. So, uh, so we're what, what's called an entrepreneurial support organization. <laughs> and our entire mission exists to meet entrepreneurs, small business owners where they are, uh, to help them think through kind of what their biggest challenges are and to help them grow. Uh, many times that's helping entrepreneurs start. So we have a number of people who come to us and say, I have an idea, and my idea is going to change the world. And so we take them through a very specific one-on-one -on -one consulting process to help them actually increase the likelihood that launching that business that is going to be successful. Uh, we spend a vast majority of our time as well working with existing business owners, whether it's recruitment and retention challenges, whether it's um, uh, new client challenges, it's sales process challenges, or what have you. We spend an inordinate amount of time I spend the vast majority of my time doing one-on-one -on -one consultations with entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, and small business owners. So that's our kind of what I would call high-touch uh, approach. We also do a number of workshops, trainings. Uh, we've got someone coming in tomorrow who's doing one on business financials. Uh, I've done several. I did one a couple of weeks ago on weathering the storm of an economic downturn. Tips that entrepreneurs can use in the climate right now to think about how to better run their business. Uh, and so those are the primary things that we do. So coaching, consulting, training, technical assistance. And then we really look for a number of entrepreneurs who are, who are needing access to capital. We administer the Kiva Loan Program. We're a trustee for the Kiva Loan Program, which is a, uh, up to $15,000 of uh, zero interest loans that can be applied to certain small businesses that need them. They have to come through us to get on the platform and then actually crowdsource those loans from folks willing to, to uh, to uh, contribute to those. And then as Grace said, we run a number of other programs like the 10X Growth Accelerator uh, that's funded by the AEDC. 14 weeks, we've put about 75, 80 companies mm -hmm. through over the course of the last six years. We run an award-winning health sciences entrepreneurship boot camp for college juniors, seniors, uh, uh, immediate postgraduates, and graduate students. Uh, we run that on the UCA campus uh, where we bring in folks from all around the state who are interested in either entrepreneurship, health sciences, or a combination, and we run them through a week-long innovation sprint to help them flesh out challenges in healthcare and build, uh, uh, build uh, uh, 
applications or solutions around those. And we actually have former, uh, I think of one particular anecdote, a junior in college at, at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock at the time who came through that health sciences boot camp back in 2017 who now runs an actual medical device company that he created. So lots of good success stories there. Is that, is that helpful? Oh, yeah. I, I kind of knew what you what you guys did, sure. but I wanted it to be clear for everyone because I think it's important, especially right now, you and I have talked briefly uh, about the understaffing problem that a lot of small businesses have, not only in Conway, but all over the United States. Um it's it's a major major problem, so I'm I'm glad that there's someone out there that can help coach someone through that. We actually have a couple of people on our staff who are former recruiters. So when you're ready to sit down and talk again, we'd be glad to, to bring those to the table as well. Thank you. Sure. Are any of these businesses located in Conway? Yes. Uh, graduate from? Well, I say graduate. I don't know what they. Is the, the that what somebody that goes through the conductor does? Do they so they don't graduate. We, we're kind of like the mafia. There's only one way out. Uh, <laughs> and so I to basically tell, that was a joke, by the way, um, for all you listening in. Um, so I basically <laughs> tell folks that one year, once you're a conductor client, you're always a conductor client. So there's not really a graduation. Uh, we, we, I've been working with some folks since day one. But the, set, about 70% of the folks we're working with today are Conway-based or Conway-area-based uh, clients. How many is that number again? We've we've touched over thirty five thousand people in the last seven. Almost heard seven you, I heard you say that earlier today. Is that thirty five thousand in Conway? No, that's, that's, County, that's total statewide. Uh, that's total about statewide, of which about seventy percent, I would say, are are Conway. Sixty sixty percent are total Conway. When you say touch them, translate that. So they may have been one on one consults. They may have gone through a an extended program of ours. They may have. They may be a a co-worker at the Arnold Innovation Center, they, they've gone through something for which they received value back from the conductor, a training exercise, training program, or what have you. More questions, Council? There's a short time frame for yeah. us to, to, to <laughs> act on this. I mean, we agree. It was a short time frame for us, too, so we feel you. Yeah. And we yeah. appreciate your consideration. So if you, if you don't get the grant, there's no money... Exchange. That's right. We're at, so that's a great point. If if we don't get the grant, there's no money. What we're asking for is a commitment if the grant comes to fruition. By the way, that commitment wouldn't have to be, um, uh, the, the, the grant period is like July, we think, when they're going to actually start paying. So it would be the second half of, say, a fiscal year uh, or a calendar year. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the grant, if we don't win the grant, there's no match requirement. We'd love for the city to be a partner, but we also understand the short time frame. 